Okay, so I've got some uh, AutoCAD, also some drawings done with AutoCAD originally, but then turned into a PDF file, and I want to then bring these into AutoCAD uh, so that I can do some calculations, uh, mainly from the uh, from the floor plan. So I need to work out some areas of these different floor materials, uh, but I can't do that until I've got this drawing to scale in AutoCAD. So I'm going to switch over to AutoCAD now and. Uh, from the welcome screen, just start a new drawing by clicking on the uh, button there to start drawing. And it uh, doesn't hurt to double check that it's the metric template. Just by clicking on the scale button there, you can see these are all metric scales. Uh, so if you have scales that look like this, from 1 to 1 down to uh, 1 to 100, uh, they're metric. And so, you know, it's a metric template. And uh, I can start working. And so, uh, I'm going to go to the uh, Insert tab and then click the Attach button. And then Attach. And then at the bottom of the dialog box that comes up, I'm going to change the file types there to PDF. And Having done that, I'm going to browse to P Drive and then Kiri Design uh, Construction 1, all the way back in Week 1, and then Example Drawings, and you can see there Example Construction Drawings. I'll choose Open, and this is a document that has multiple pages. So you need to choose the page you want to import. You can only import one page at a time. So I've just gone back to the PDF file so I can see the page number of the plan I want. You can see there it's uh, number three up the top. So switching back to AutoCAD, I'll choose page three there. And I'm also going to put in a scale. So I know from experience that uh, this will come in very small. Uh, if I don't put in a scale factor, so I'm going to change the scale there to a thousand just to make it a manageable size and I'm going to leave everything unticked. So insertion point, location, scale, all unticked. And I'll click OK. I can't see it yet, but I'm going to, uh, uh, or you can either double click with the wheel or right click and then choose uh, zoom and then right click again and then choose zoom extends. Okay, so it's zoomed to the extent, in other words, to the uh, drawing I've imported and so I'm going to zoom in, just have a look at it and see if we can find some references or some sort of handle that we can use to uh, get a hold of the size. And we've got quite a few different options there. We've got the dimensions. So you can see there that's a measurement. And uh, so that's going to work. Uh, but another option is to see if you can find a scale bar. But with this drawing, it's got instead of a scale bar, it's just got a scale and then a sheet size. And that works as well. So uh, you can see the whole page. We know that's A2, so you could use that uh, as a reference for scaling, but in this case, because we've got a dimension, uh, that's going to work really well, so I'll use that. So you're essentially looking for anything that's going to give you accurate measurements. Uh, in this case, again, the dimension is giving us that, and so I'll zoom so I can see that dimension uh, and see both ends that it's measuring. And I'm going to go to Utilities and then click the Measure button. And then click on the two ends of that dimension. So clicking on the left hand side and then clicking on the end on the right. And then you can see that the measurement it's giving me is actually quite large. It's uh, 87169 millimetres. But we know it should be 4358 millimetres. Now, because this was done in AutoCAD, if you do the maths in your head, you'll see that's actually 50 times, um, or in uh, 
multiple of 50 uh, times that measurement. And I'll just, uh, just work that out for you. So I can just go CAL, enter, uh, 4358, asterisk, is uh, multiply, and then 50, enter, and you can see then the number it's giving me 217,900, and uh, actually, sorry, I was way off. So, uh, so it's not in an increment, it's, um, it's something else. So sometimes you will see that it does come in scaled um, the way it should be, and that's the number it should be, but in this case it's not. So what I'm going to show you now is how we can turn it into the right number. So again, we need that measurement, and it doesn't hurt just to do that measurement again, just to make sure. Uh, so I'll click on the measure button and just do it slightly differently. I'm just going to click on the, um, the bottom end of that dimension, and then go across to the top end. So I'm two still clicking on the two uh, ends of those lines, but I've actually uh, done a diagonal measurement there. I just want to show you if I click on the little up arrow there and look at the command history, it's going to give me both the del no, the distance, the diagonal distance, which is 87310, but also the delta x. So that's the distance across, and you can see that's 87169, and that's the same as the measurement up there. So it's good to know that you've got delta x and delta y as separate measurements. So we need to remember that number, 87169. Uh, and a good way of remembering that is uh, to let the computer do it. So I'm going to select the number there, and I'm going to right click, and then uh, just choose copy. So that's copied to the clipboard. So if you're memorizing it. Uh, and so now I'm going to use scale. Uh, on the modifier panel, you've got the scale uh, tool. So I'm just going to click scale. And then I'm going to select the PDF just by clicking on the border there. And then enter. Does it have to be a PDF? Uh, no, no, you can use any. Yep, yep, bitmap files work as well. The quality won't be as good, but you can still yep, scale them the same way. Yep. Uh, so. So I've selected it, it's still asking me to select objects, so I'm going to press enter to finish selecting. Now it's asking me for a base point. Remember I inserted with 0, 0 as my base point, so I'm going to type 0, 0, so 0, comma, 0, enter, and use that as my base point again. And now it's the scale factor. So this is the really useful part, and uh, so it's a simple formula to remember. It's the size you want it to be divided by the size it is. Okay, so think about it. The size we want it to be, that's the measurement that we can see there. It's, it tells us it's 4358. Well, that's what it should be. So that's the size we want it to be. So 4358 is the first measurement. So I'll type that in. And then to divide, it's forward slash on the keyboard, so that's next to the shift key. And then the size it is, is that measurement I took before. So I measured it, that's the size it is. And so I'm going to right click and paste to get that number back. And notice I didn't worry about the decimals. So it's rounded off to the nearest millimetre. Okay, so it's in this case, 4358 divided by 87169. I'm going to press enter. Now, don't worry if you think it might be wrong, because you're going to check that afterwards. So, uh, it's, it's a good thing to uh, learn by a bit of trial and error. You'll know if it's not the right size straight away, because when you measure it, uh, it won't give you the right dimension. So, back to utilities, I'm going to use measure again and then click on the two ends of my dimension. That can be diagonal, remember, that's okay. Enter. 
twice just to finish it or escape and then I'll look at the history to see the measurement which you can see there 4358 not worrying about the decimal so it's the delta x which I need and that's the distance across yeah. sounds hard but it's easy when you do it And uh, look, that's something I had to work out in the first architecture firm I worked in because they were scaling it uh, a bit at a time. So they'd scale it up a little bit and then up a bit more on the photocopier and then up a bit more and then eventually then just keep measuring it each time and then eventually get it to the right size. Um, and, uh, and then they would do the same thing with AutoCAD. And then um, because I was just doing it so much, um, I realised that there was a pretty simple relationship there. And uh, I'm I'm not the first person who's worked it out, but uh, but again, lots of people I know um, need to do that all the time, but take a long time to do it. If you remember that simple method, uh, you can do it easily every time. So I'm going to repeat that uh, with a drawing at a different scale, um, just to make it clear. Uh, so scrolling through here, and if you read off, sorry, let's go back. So if you read off this drawing here on the uh, references, you'll see that the uh, bathroom which you can see in the plan there, um, has a detail plan which you'll be able to use to get your areas more accurately for the tiles. So it is drawing number 15 from memory. Yep, this one here. So that's actually page 13. You can see there it's uh, pretty sure it's WD 15. Oh no, that's 13, sorry, I'm on the wrong drawing. So that's the, uh, the laundry. I thought it was 15. Maybe I'm thinking of the uh, no, sorry, I'm thinking of the elevations. So it is 13. Sorry, this one here. And uh, so again, the, the important thing there is we know the page number um, in PDF file is 13 up the top there. Uh, so back into AutoCAD, uh, I'm just going to repeat the process. I don't need to make a new file. I can insert it into here, and that's a good thing because it'll have a uh, a reference that we can use to check uh, that the size is right. You'll see that in a second. So I'm going to go to insert and then again click the attach button. Um, watch uh, the other attach button. Make sure you realise there are two buttons that say attach, but one of them has this uh, more cloud like symbol. And that is there to remind you this is the attach button for point clouds, which you shouldn't be using and you probably won't need to use for a long time. I've never really needed to use them, so probably just avoid that one. Um, and uh, just make sure you realise there are two attach buttons, but the first one is the one for images and PDF files. So it's still on PDF down here, and I just need to select the same file as I did before. Now I'm going to scroll down and just choose page 13. Again, I'm going to put in the same scale factor, 1000. If you're wondering where I get that number from, it's arbitrary. So I've just pulled that out of my head. Um, it's probably a little bit too big, but it's better to be too big than too small. Um, if, if, you're, if you're wondering, it's actually going to be more accurate if we're scaling down rather than scaling up. So, so again, too big is, is actually okay. And uh, so I'm going to, uh, this time though, tick the uh, specified screen for insertion point before I click OK. Because if I leave this on zero, zero, it's going to go over the top of the one I've just done. So that's uh, all the settings I need. I'm going to click OK. And then I might just use object tracking. So by moving the cursor over the endpoint on the corner there, the uh, tracking line will come up and I can click a point to the right of the plan. That's probably a little bit fussy though. It doesn't matter if. Uh, if you do that roughly, just putting the point somewhere to the right there. And again, you can see it's, uh, like I was saying, too big. But that's okay, because we're going to scale it down, and again, that's actually more accurate. So again, now I need to find a dimension. A lot of these have check on site, which means that the measurement needs to be, or COS, sorry. So that means, uh, again, check on site. So. Uh, they should still be accurate, but I'm going to try and find one that doesn't have check on site because um, that's a better bet. So here we go, we've got the 900 there, which um, 
should be uh, perfectly accurate. So I'm going to go back to the home tab and repeat the process. I'm going to go to measure and then just pick a point on the line there, either the end or the midpoint. And then I'm going to pick another point on the line on the other end of that dimension. not worrying if it's diagonal as long as I've picked on the two lines and then I can see the delta y this time is 45003. So I'll press enter and then escape to get out of the measure tool and now clicking on the arrow to bring up the history I can find delta y and just select all of those numbers before the decimal point. Right click and then copy. history away and then maybe zoom out to see the whole drawing again. Uh, click on the scale tool. Click on the edge of the image to select the drawing and then press enter. Uh, this time to give the base point I'm going to zoom in and find the corner and click on that corner so it's scaling from the corner of this image or this drawing. And now it's going to ask for the scale factor, which is where, again, I need to remember that formula, which is, again, the size we want it to be. That's easy to remember. This time it was a round number, 900. Forward slash, or divided by, the size it is. So, again, I can right-click and choose Paste to bring that up. And now Enter. And it's scaled, hopefully, exactly right. Well, I can tell visually that it is right. And the way I can tell is because it's two-fifths the size of uh, this sheet. So there's something to learn with experience. A 1 to 50 drawing is, well, sorry, a better way of saying it, is a 1 to 20 drawing is two-fifths the size of 1 to 50, or 20 over 50. And hopefully you can tell visually that is two fifths of this shape. Right, so one to a hundred would be double the size again. Uh, another way of checking though is to again do what I did before and measure now this dimension. So I'm going to just click on the line at either end, and there we are. So delta y. See there. So that means I can measure anything off either of these drawings and the measurements will be right. I can draw over the top of them and draw in my own design and, uh, and trace off any part of it that I want and again the size will be right. Um, and so finally as a last double check we can see this drawing here is the uh, same bathroom we're looking at there, and visually you can tell clearly they're the same size. This one just has a bit more detail, so it might look a little bit bigger, but uh, when you look closely you'll see they actually are the same size. Okay, so really important thing that you need to be able to do for all of your work really, but uh, particularly here with this assignment, to measure those areas, you need to first have those drawings in uh, AutoCAD at scale. So I'll give you a bit of time to do that, and then we can have a look at measuring the areas, which like I said is uh, easier actually than what we've just done.